All right, well, I have two o'clock and I believe we have most of the people on. So let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, thanks again for joining our PhD Plus webinar. As I mentioned earlier, my name is Bobby Haggard and I'm one of the consultants here at Trendsoft and I focus on our PhD Plus solution. Uh, I've been working with ERP and accounting systems for almost 15 years and I've been with Trendsoft uh, coming up on five years. So it's been a fun, fun time. Um, I'm joined on our webinar by a couple of my co-workers, Tara Cox and Callie Wagner, who will be managing uh, the Q&A um, section. So if you have questions, please go ahead and submit those through the Q&A. Uh, we'll be happy to try and answer those if we can during the webinar. Any that we can't, we will be certain to follow up with you uh, after the webinar one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Um, if you are interested in a copy of the presentation or the video, uh, just send me a little link or email and I'll be sure to get those sent your way as well. So if you're interested in those, just drop us a message in the in the Q&A section uh, of, of the webinar here and we'll be sure to get that sent your way. So let's go ahead and jump right in and get started here. <clears throat> Now imagine if you and your company had an ERP solution that could save you money, that would allow users and machines to run at maximum efficiency, and that would make your companies happier. Or imagine if you had an all-in-one ERP solution that would allow you to have total visibility and complete control over your company and warehouse activity. What if you could easily track travelers, work orders, and routing so that you knew where different jobs were within your facility at one time? Or how nice would it be to be seamlessly track a quote converted to an order that's then shipped as a final product to ship to your customer and build in a timely manner. Finally, imagine a SaaS solution with has a built-in general ledger, trial balance, and vendor customer ledger detail statements, fully updated and integrated throughout the entire process with no rekeying or duplicate data entry. How valuable would that be to you and your company? Well, that's exactly what you get with PHC Plus. Let's quickly review what we plan to cover today on this webinar. First, we'll look at what our solution is, PSC Plus. We'll talk about what our solution is built on top of, which is Dynamics. We'll quickly hit on who we are as Trendsoft, and then we'll dive into a quick demonstration, just hitting on a few of the features, capabilities of our solution. Fully recognize this is just a quick uh, webinar. It's, it's to generate interest and questions, which we would hope to follow up with on, on further introductory calls. So uh, if again, if we don't hit on every feature and capability, just know this is a full rich solution um, and we'll be happy to hit on those with you after the webinar. All right, so let's figure out what is this thing called PHC Plus. Well, PHC Plus is a product, is a, is a powerful all-in-one ERP solution that we've previously seen include chart of accounts, general ledger, AP, AR, manufacturing, fixed assets, and much, much more. PHC Plus was specifically designed for the plating, heat treating, and finishing services industry, where you receive a customer's part, perform a process or a route on those parts, and then send those same parts either back to the customer or on to the next, uh, next uh, shop in the, in the supply chain. Now imagine having a single view into all of your systems so that you have complete control and insight into what may, so that you can make quick and educated decisions while continuing to provide strong customer support. In this solution, there is one entry point. The user will not be logging in and out of multiple programs or rekeying the same order or invoice into different systems. With PHC Plus, it's all contained within one software system. Now that we know what our software does, let's look at a few of the finishing types that we've worked with in the past. So if your company is performing any type of plating, coding, sealing type services, then you should be using PHC Plus. Listen here, just a few examples of the types of services that have used our solution. As you can see, it's a wide variety of finishing type services that this solution can support. All right, let's now take a quick look at a visual depiction of how the system is designed to work at a high level. So for this scenario, we have a customer that calls in and they say that they have a thousand springs that they need coded. Sometimes they ask for a quote, which our system can certainly provide. Other times they just ship those items directly to your warehouse. Now, once these items reach your warehouse, we receive them either through barcode scanning or manual entry, and we create what's called a traveler document. Now this traveler document is a roadmap that these parts will follow throughout your warehouse. In this basic example, it's a simple three-step process where we will deburr the parts, perform our nickel plating process on those parts, and then a quality inspection at the end. 
So now that the parts are ready to be processed, the warehouse worker takes the crate of parts, picks up the traveler document, and is able to see that the first step in the process is the debur process. The worker follows the comments and parameters as set forth on the traveler document, which we'll take a look at in just a minute. And once that first step is complete, they will then move that to the second step, which is the nickel plating process. Again, the worker follows the nickel plating line uh, according to the comments and parameters set forth, and they complete the actual plating process. At this point, the items are passed along to the quality inspection, uh, where our worker will perform the quality inspection, the QC review. And once that's complete, we now have our fully coated spring. At this point, it's important that we're going to ship those items either back to our customer or on to the next stop in the supply chain. We'll also invoice our customer. And when all of this is done, um, without any hiccups or any delays, we have our happy customers there at the end of the rail. So again, it's important to note that throughout this process, so these parts traveling throughout the warehouse, PHA Plus is simultaneously updating the general ledger, customer card, tracking the parts, aging of invoices, etc. So there's no need for duplicate entry, rekeying, or trying to integrate into QuickBooks or some other accounting solution because PHA Plus has that completely built in and fully integrated. So with this being fully integrated, that saves your employees time and allows them to be more efficient and impactful in what they do. Let's now take a look at our traveler document as that's certainly an important piece of, of our solution. So here is our traveler document. Let's go over a few pieces of this. First is our traveler number. This is a unique number that follows those specific parts throughout your warehouse. Next up is information section. This includes your customer information, item, description, quantity, weights, etc. cetera. Uh, just wanted to highlight here barcoding. We have both barcoding and QR code uh, reading capabilities within PHC Plus and Business Central. Next up, we have the name of the route or process being performed. And then we have our different route or process specific steps. Within each step, we have an area for the staff to sign off on and confirm that those were done. We have step specific instructions. So as you can see, those change per step, which we can set that up. And we also have quality specific uh, instructions per step of the route, which is really nice. And then finally, we have what we call our process option. So this is an example of if a shop or, or your, your warehouse has multiple lines, there are different sizes. You can set parameters and set some guidance for your staff on how to set up the line, what line it runs on, how many bars per load, pounds per load, bars per rack, et cetera. So it's just some nice information for your team. Finally, it's important to note that this is just the base layout of PHC Plus. Our system is flexible where this report can be changed to fit your exact needs. An example of this is that we've added uh, for some clients a picture on our traveler document so that this is a great um, quality control check for employees so that they can look at the traveler document, see the picture of the part or the items uh, on the traveler, look down at the physical items in front of them, make sure that those are the same and we're not having to do any type of rework or stripping or anything like that on a, on a mismatched part. So it's just a nice quality control step that we've done to save some time and money for different organizations. All right, now that we know a little more about PC Plus, let's step back a little bit and look at what our solution is built on top of which is Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. Now, most people are familiar with Microsoft uh, from familiar products such as Word, Excel, PowerPoint, or even Outlook. However, a lot of people don't know that Microsoft has its own line of ERP software solutions. They have different offerings called SL, uh, Solomon, Great Plains, GP for short, uh, Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central, and then finally Dynamics AX for those larger Fortune 100, Fortune 500 companies. Our solution is built on Business Central, that solution in the bottom left corner. So we've taken Microsoft's native solution and we've added our specific extensions and, and uh, vertical solution on top of Business Central. Now, to give you an idea of the universe of Business Central, the latest numbers I've seen is about uh, 200,000 companies worldwide running Business Central with about 5 million users within that. So as you can see, it's a very large product pool uh, supported by Microsoft and the larger partner community, and, and you would be in good company running Business Central and PHD+. Um, let's now take a look at a couple of the modules and functionality that come with PHC+. So as I mentioned, our solution is built on top of Microsoft's award-winning business platform. So when you purchase PHC+, you also get Business Central 
at no additional cost. So with PC Plus and Microsoft Dynamics, you get all the financial management to run your general ledger, chart of accounts, sales, purchasing, manufacturing, warehousing, um, et cetera, and reporting and much, much more. Um, since Dynamics 365 is a Microsoft owned and licensed software, it seamlessly integrates with Windows, uh, Excel, Word, um, those uh, common office products. So when you combine PHC Plus with Microsoft Dynamics, it will give your company the necessary insights into your organization and the control over your processes to help reduce costs, increase your margins, and increase uh, customer service level and satisfaction by, again, giving you that single view into your items throughout your system. All right, let's take one more step back here before we dive into the, the, the uh, actual system and understand who we are as Trendsoft um, to better understand what we do. So we were founded in 1996, and we've a since achieved the highest level of partnership with Microsoft. We are a gold certified Microsoft ERP partner. And over those last two decades, we've done well over 100 ERP solutions for multiple organizations with offices throughout the world. We have roughly 200 active clients in roughly 17 states at this time. And throughout our 20 plus years of existence, we've been able to create and develop some very structured processes for installations, uh, and, we, and we understand how projects should run and how to save our clients money and make them more efficient uh, in, in, in implementing and rolling out a new solution. We are experts in Microsoft's business platform and we do all things related to ERP installations, project management, upgrades, customizations, help desk support, and much, much more. In addition, you can see we are able to do reporting, dashboards, automated, automation integration as well. We even have a uh, document management solution called TrendDocs, which a lot of our plating clients have really liked to help cut down on so much of that paperwork. We've been able to um, eliminate literal, literally offices of filing cabinets because of our TrendDocs uh, paperless automation solution. So just a little bit uh, about what we do, who we are as TrendSoft. Um, let's now jump into our actual demonstration uh, company here and, and show you guys the solution. Again, as I get this set up, if you have any questions, please use our Q&A. We'll be sure to try and either address those on our presentation or uh, follow up directly with you afterwards. Okay, hopefully you are seeing um, in the upper left-hand corner, it says Cronus USA. If somebody's not seeing that, please just drop me a little comment in the Q&A and we'll get that worked out. But I'll, I will assume at this point that we are all on the same page and we are viewing Business Central here. So our solution, I'm not sure if I mentioned it previously or not, is available either in the cloud or with an on-premise installation. So what you can see here is I'm just on a regular internet browser. So if I was to go to um, you know, any internet search window, I would just go to Google. So I am in the cloud, I am hitting a just a general website, and I would be able to hit this from a phone, a tablet, a laptop, anywhere literally that I have a internet connection, I can connect to my system, see what's going on, make transactions, review what's going on within the system. Um, so I thought before we jumped into a specific uh, interaction or process of PHC Plus, just a quick overview of, of Business Central um, to give you an idea of how it's set up and how it works. So our solution is what we call a role tailored system. So when you log into the system, your user is assigned a specific role. So if I go to my, my settings here, I can see the role that's assigned to me is a business manager. The system has about 30 or 40 predefined roles within the solution, within the system. And, and that role drives your security and permissions throughout the system. Now we work with multiple companies that say, hey, you know, in the morning I'm doing shipping and receiving, and then in the afternoon I'm doing back office stuff, I'm doing bookkeeping, um, financial management, et cetera. We can, no worries there, we can combine roles, create new roles, and mix and match these as, as you need and as you, your company sees fit, which is a nice, nice feature within the system. Uh, it's important to know our system also supports multiple companies. So if you have multiple companies within your organization or within your company structure, we can support that all within this one solution, which is again, a nice feature to have. 
And so once you log in, the company shows you, it shows your company that you're logged into and your role that's assigned to you drives what's called your role center homepage, which is where we are right here. Now, Microsoft has designed this role center homepage to give as much information and as, as much of what the user does according to their role right here at their fingertips so that they're not having to navigate out to different windows and to different views to do things. They, the Microsoft has tried to make it all right here within this one view. So the way the system is laid out is it has a grouping along the top of different modules or, or areas. And within that area, there are groupings of functions or features that are held within, within that area. So here we have our finance area. We have our general journals, our chart of accounts, fixed assets, budgeting, et cetera. If we jump over to sales, just as you would expect, customers, items, sales orders, sales invoices, uh, blankets, et cetera. Purchasing, same as sales, just the other side, vendors, uh, purchase orders, purchase invoices, et cetera. So a lot, a lot of groupings here, and that kind of gives you an idea of how that system is laid out. Now, what's nice is below that, we have what's called our favorited links and windows and views. And what's nice is the individual user is in control of what they want up here. So uh, in, in my particular setup here, I just have my favorited view, just how I would walk through um, a, a traveler or, or receiving items for a customer and creating that traveler document. So I have my different items for customers, vendors, items, um, sales orders, travelers, et cetera. And again, I'm in control of what I want shown there. To the left is our what we call our headline area. Um, this is where we have some AI that's built in to the system, and it's actually going out and reading some of those underlying data for you to try and give you some uh, meaningful insights into what um, the system has that you may not just capture right away. So it's trying to give you some insights there. To the right, we have our actions area. This is, again, where I'm set up as a business manager. I'm, I'm often entering sales invoices or purchase quotes, purchase orders, et cetera. I'm entering you know, new customers, new vendors, and I can quickly enter those, or I could quickly run you know, a financial statement for a balance sheet if I wanted to. Could very quickly run that, have it pop up here on a preview if I needed to, and it would be right here and available. As we scroll down, different activities and, and different tiles and ways of viewing information here. Again, you're in control of what you want shown or, or hidden within your action bar. But it's nice to know that this is drillable. So here I can look at my overdue purchase invoices, drill into that balance of 62,000. It's gonna po uh, open up a window and it's gonna show me exactly what those 62,000 are. Now, as I mentioned, this is a Microsoft solution. So the ability to not only open in Excel, but there's also the ability to edit in Excel. So I could kick this list out to Excel, make updates and republish it from Excel into Business Central, which is a really nice solution and a really nice feature to have. Now, another thing within our solution here, um, anytime I'm at a uh, on an invoice and I see, uh, I go to my options here, uh, sorry, related. and I go to my find entries, the system is going to show me exactly where this particular invoice has transactioned or impacted the system. So that one invoice that I highlighted there, it's created one posted purchase invoice, seven general ledger entries, three tax entries, et cetera, et cetera. You say that's nice, but hey, I wanna see the actual debits and credits. I can do that just by clicking on um, that number there. It's gonna take us to the actual debits and credits. So here is my general ledger account. Here are my various debits and credits for my uh, entry here for my transaction. So very quickly, I was able to get from my high level dashboard, looking at what was aged for my purchase invoices, drilled down into that list. From that list, I very quickly drilled down to one specific invoice to look at the debits and credits that are possible there. Now, some different things here within the system. Uh, this is a really handle, handy little icon here. I can pop each window out. So as you have probably noticed, these windows are building on top of themselves. You can very quickly pop a window out. And then if I'm using multiple monitors, I can look at those between the two windows, which is a nice feature to have. Uh, again, lots and lots of keyboard shortcuts as well. So I, uh, what you're not seeing here, unfortunately, is when I hit escape on a window, it's going to close that front window for me. Um, seem to be getting some sort of lag. Hopefully I haven't lost connection. I'll just refresh it here. 
Sorry about that. Got to love demonstrating while at home during COVID, right? Little internet glitches, lovely stuff. All right, so again, as we give this a second to load up, I was just going over the layout and navigation uh, of the system. So we looked at our entry there. We'll go back here to our home screen. All right, sorry about that. So lots of abilities to drill down, drill back into the system. Uh, as I continue to scroll down, lots of setup options we can do here. I can have favorited accounts, favorited customers, favorited items. that are right here where I can quickly view what my balance is in my various accounts. Same thing here on my trial balance, quick view of what's going on with revenue, uh, gross margin, expenses, et cetera. And then you see here a report inbox and some Power BI. We'll, we'll get into Power BI quickly at the end, but this report inbox feature is very nice as well in that you can set reports to run overnight. And then when you come in in the morning, they're right there at your inbox ready to go. Now, one other thing, really intuitive search box. So if you don't like to use the um, navigation features to navigate up here, or you don't want to use your favorited icons, the system has a super powerful search box. So as I begin typing, such as IT, the system is giving me suggestions of where it thinks I'm trying to go, not only on my current page, but of pages within the system and even reports within the system within that. So as you see here, there's 50 in total that just have IT uh, somewhere in the page title or task title and 50 on my report and analysis. As I continue to type, the system's gonna narrow that down to try and understand where it thinks I'm trying to go. So here I have items and I can scroll down. I can see different pages and tasks related to items I can go to, different reports and analysis. But one thing that I think uh, sets Microsoft apart here is we have our documentation as well. So I can click on my documentation here, something about catalogs, and it's going to take me directly to the underlying Microsoft documentation, which is the same documentation that we as partners have access to. And as you see here, it gives me step-by-step -step instruction on how to create a new catalog of items if I needed to. So just a really powerful solution and powerful option that's available here within the solution. All right, let's jump in uh, here more specifically. There's lots I could hit on here for Business Central, but just wanted to hit on a couple things uh, within the solution. So let's now hit on a specific for um, our plating industry here. And so the scenario again, is that we have a customer that's calling or sending us some parts and we're gonna receive those in. So in our solution, in PHC Plus, oh, a a receipt is done or the creation, the receipt of those items is done through what we call a sales order. So we'll go into a sales order and we will create a new sales order. And once our new sales order window pops up, we're gonna have to enter a few things to tell the system what we're doing here. I'm gonna hide my inquiry pane to give us a little more space here within the system. So I will tab off of my number take the next default system number. I'm gonna enter my uh, customer number or name if I can't remember that. I could look it up if I needed to. So maybe I don't remember the customer number that I'm working with, but I know their customer name. I'm gonna go down here and select my customer, which is my uh, ZZ part retailer customer. And I'll say, okay. And as I do that, you'll see here, um, you'll see that all of this uh, general section has automatically pulled in and there's lots of information that's out here. So I have a lot of this hidden as it's not important to me, but this is all pulled in from our customer card. So I can hit show less here and it's going to show us just a little bit less de detail here. So I can then drop down to my line section. Well, I'm going to go through here and enter what it is our customer is sending to us. So here they're sending us uh, some items. They're sending us some spacers in this instance. Once I pick my spacer and I tab off, a lot of this information is pre-entered based off uh, the information about the spacer. So I have a variant code, which essentially assigns these spacers to this specific, specific particular customer. Because we had found that we had some clients that would tell us, hey, we've received in this instance spacers from multiple clients. They're the same size, same shape, same, same diameter, all of that, and we're performing the same process on them. We want to be able to run those together, but then still disseminate and disperse those back to the various customers. So the variant code is what we came up as a way to do that. We jump over to our modifier here. This is just the route or the process recipe that we're going to be performing on those. So we're going to do a simple nickel plate on these. And that again ties these items 
for this customer to our nickel plate or our 500 modifier route. Again, that's our spacers, you know the measure. Come out here to my piece count. How many pieces did they send us? Uh, 20,000 20, pieces. And we have that weight automatically set up to do that. Again, all of this is configurable and how you want to set up the system. I can enter as much or as little of this information if I want to. So customer's PO number, lot number they were shipped on maybe. Hey, how many boxes, how many containers did this come in? It came in three, there were three boxes. How many skids or pallets did that come in? Just one skid. Again, you can put as much or little of this detail out here as you want to, some sort of tracking number if needed. And so with this, we're ready to go. Uh, the other thing I would note down here in shipping and billing, I could change if I wanted to my ship to address. So once these parts are completed, I can change who I want these shipped to. So if I wanted to, to ship this to an alternate shipping address, meaning I don't want these to return uh, from where they came from, I can select that here within the system as well. So I'll just say, okay, and we'll proceed with our presentation. So now we're receiving these from our ZZ part retailer. They're going to be shipped back to their Frankfurt address, or, you know, if that's another supplier in the, in the, in the supply chain, it would be sent back to them. So as I go through here, um, I wanted to point out that my traveler number column is blank um, that we see right here and our status is open. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and release this sales order by hitting release. This is essentially saying that we have received these items uh, into our inventory or into our system. Uh, and that that is what will automatically create our traveler number. So by hitting release, we're going to create our traveler T100015. With that, we're done with our sales order window and we'll close that. We can go back to our homepage here and use our favorited items. And I'm gonna go to my traveler window. All right, so once I am on my traveler window here, you can see all of the various travelers within our system. Here's T100015, all the relevant information about that traveler is listed here. Again, I didn't rekey anything, I didn't manually key anything. It's just all out here because that's what I entered from the sales order. From here, I could quickly view or print uh, my traveler document if I needed to. So I'll go up here, print traveler. Again, we already uh, quickly previewed this, so we'll preview it uh, here. So there's traveler, very similar again, multiple multiple comments per step, different quality measures, different process parameters, et cetera, on this particular traveler. So we could either print that out, put it in a protective sheath, put it on those creative parts, and you're ready to go. The other thing we do is we can actually open our, our uh, traveler card here. And a couple of things I like to point out here on our traveler card. First off, we have our different statuses. So this is received. Is it in-house? Yes different pallet information, different inf sizing information. We have our sales order information, and then we also have a log down here, which is really nice. So um, we can see exactly what's been done on this traveler. We created it and we've modified it and it's been received. All of this is configurable by you and your team, depending on what you want your statuses to be, how you want that to flow, et cetera. So what we're gonna do now, um, you have the option to process things manually by changing the status from one to another. But what I'm going to try and simulate now is um, a scanning action. Most of the groups that we work with have traveler, uh, have scan guns in their office or in their warehouse, and we'll, we fully integrate with that. So what we have here is just a traveler scan that I'm simulating here. So normally you would scan this. I'm just typing in it in uh, manually here. If I can count and talk. Um, to simulate the scan. So once we do that, we scan our traveler and it's hit next, it automatically pulls up the different actions that are available. I'm, in this instance, I know I'm running short on time here. I'm just gonna jump down to my quality inspection line. I'm gonna hit next here. And we're gonna say, what action are we performing on this uh, uh, quality scan? So we'll say pass. Once we do that and hit next and save, we'll now see as I close this and come back down on my traveler card for this uh, traveler. We now have our action. It's recorded our log of entry. We look at our status, it's ready to ship. And this item is ready to go, which is a really nice solution, really nice tool.
that we can do. So you can see here the power of this log being able to call or reference at any time a customer calls in, hey, Bobby, where are my you know spacers um, that we sent last week? I can quickly pull up this traveler card, see exactly where it is within the solution. Now, a couple of things I wanted to point out as well. I'm, not, I'm gonna change this back to just received because I wanna show you what it's like to fail an item. So here it's received. Again, back here on our log, we have that tracing that's available as well. So I'm gonna pull back up my traveler scan, traveler action. I'm gonna re-enter my traveler number here. And this time I'm gonna again go to my quality inspection. I'm going to fail this. And as I fail this, you're gonna see the system is gonna prompt me to say, why was it failed? So that's what we're seeing here. So I now said failed on my action. I'm gonna drop down here and says, okay, what is the reason why did this fail? And so I can now pick wrong color, thickness, you know, whatever you want those to be. So we have wrong color. I'm just making something up out here. So color should be blue. And then hit next and we are ready to save. And as we do that, and I once again close my action window, I now have on my log um, an update here. Action was created, it failed this time. The reason code was wrong color, should have been blue. I now know my route, routing step that that happened on. We can do reporting based off, hey, how many routes, where, where are things failing? What's the reason for those? You know, is it a particular user? Is it a particular line? Is it a particular shift that this is happening on? And what you see here as well, the status is now in a hold status. So we would then set up, you know, a report or views that have a status for any traveler with the status of hold. And it's somebody's job to monitor those and say, okay, do we need to do a rework? Do we need to do a, a another dip or another uh, VAT within this process? So lots of options of what you can do there within the system. All right, this time to move it along, I'm just going to manually change this to ready to ship, meaning that we have completed this, this route and we're ready to go. So here's our route, fully received, fully in a ready to ship uh, process, and we're ready to go. So now I will go to my warehouse shipments. And what you can see from the search box as well is pretty powerful. I only have to type in the whole word. Uh, I can just type in parts of it and it will tell me what it is it thinks I'm trying to do. So again, we'll go to our warehouse shipments here. We'll create a new shipment. I will once again tab off of my uh, number, let that auto populate. I'm going to pick my location code, uh, which is again just the line or the location within the warehouse that, that um, you're working in. I'm going to set my uh, destination type over here as customer. I'm going to enter my customer number or ZZ part retailer. And as I do that, uh, what the system is going to do as I go up to my ribbon here and hit process and hit get finished travelers, it's gonna look for any traveler in a finished status in my blue location for customer 00050. So when I hit get finished travelers, there is my traveler we've been working on T100015. I'll say okay. It will automatically pull that information directly into our line detail. So again, I didn't have to rekey anything. I didn't have to manually enter anything within the system. It automatically pulled within the system. At this point, we're ready to go ahead and post this shipment. And so we will go out here, I'm sorry, and release this and post it. And we actually have our system configured here to uh, actually generate some certs once those are shipped. Um, so once that's done, I could open up a cert that's automatically generated. Let me drag that over so you could see here. And again, this is all configurable within you and your team. So here we have our cert based off what was done and we can have that ready to go within the system. So now we have shipped our item back to our customer and we're ready now ready to invoice. As I quickly go back to my traveler scan card, I can now see that shipped uh, within the system. So again, we can set up triggers as well to automatically generate notifications to our clients and customers saying, hey, this is shipped, this has been received, this has been completed this process. Lots of options of what we can do within the system. From here, I'm going to close uh, my traveler window, go back to my homepage. Uh, so we've received these items, we've completed our our route or process on those items. We've shipped them back. We're now ready to invoice um, our customer. So I go to my sales invoice. Here is my invoice 1012. 
um, for the order. I can open that up. As I open this up, maybe there was something that happened throughout the process and we actually need to change the pricing on this because these parts were either a lot rougher, they weren't in the best shape when they got to us, there was more work that needed to be done. Uh, we have an option here that we've built in called route pricing where we can come out here and we can actually update this pricing on the fly. So maybe initially this quality inspection that we had to do, uh, maybe it was initially, you know, I don't know, really in really rough shape and we had to do a lot more work than usual. I can change that one penny to three pennies and it automatically updated my line information and it's automatically updated our invoice. So at this point, I can go out here and um, post and print this email if I needed to. So I can go out here and post and send. So this would post it, automatically email the invoice to our customer if we needed to, or I could just go out here and post it, which is what we'll do here. So I am, we're now posting that invoice and we can take a look at our posted invoice here. So here is our posted invoice. Um, we can take a look here at our invoice. Just preview it here. And again, keep in mind, just like the traveler card, this invoice is just a sample. We can certainly change it, update it to how you want it to be. But here we have the item we received, the different operation or operating steps that were done, um, the different prices per step for that, the quantity, and then our total invoice amount. So this is just a sample invoice of what that could look like. Now, what I wanted to show you real quick, again, I know we're cutting it short uh, here. I've actually gone a few minutes long, is I wanted to show you the how integrated the system is. By going to my customer card, so this was for ZZ Part Retailer, um, I'm going to go to my customers. What we will be looking at now is just a customer list. Um, I Very intuitive, powerful list here. I can just begin typing within my search box. It's going to pull that customer up. Here from my search list, I have a fact box over here on the right. It gives me a quick snapshot or update of what's going on for that particular customer. I can drill into the balance for this customer, 12,902. From there, I can instantly see there is my invoice, 10012, $5,350 that we were just looking at within the solution. So again, I didn't rekey anything. I didn't manually key anything. It's all fully integrated here within the system. Same thing for the chart of account. So if I go back here uh, to my homepage and I wanted to look at my chart of accounts, I could go to my domestic AR and see that this transaction, this information is already out here. So as I scroll down here to my customer's domestic AR, there is my balance of open AR. And there, once again, is my transaction for the invoice. So again, no interaction, no multiple entry, no duplication, no reeking within the system, uh, which is again, really, really nice. So we created our invoice. Uh, we did a sales order to receive those items. We uh, performed our nickel plating route on those items. And then we invoiced, shipped it back to our customer and then invoiced them appropriately. Now, a lot of people quickly say, hey, what are some of the reporting examples that we can see within PHC Plus? This is just an example. So when you purchase Business Central in the cloud, you also get what's called Power BI. It's a really powerful reporting tool within Business Central that uh, it comes along with it, where you can create some really dynamic reports where we can look at, um, you know, what li how lines are doing, how different machines are doing and processes are doing within your system. We can look at, you know, this is where I was talking about looking at the fails and the reason codes associated with those and what travelers are failing. We can look at those within the system as we need to. And then we can also look at, hey, what are our shipments? What is, what's going out? Different information, lots and lots of information that we can, can pull. So I know I have flown through that here at the end. Uh, trying to fit this in. I know I've gone a couple minutes long here. This again was just a quick demonstration, show you some of the features and capabilities at a high level that our solution can do. Um, we'll be happy to stick around here for a few minutes and help answer any questions that may be out there. Um, feel free to again, drop those into the Q and A.
Again, I'm sharing here my email and my phone number. If you have any questions or you'd like to discuss further, please just drop me an email. Just give me a quick call. Be happy to follow up with you separately, you know, on some specifics. As I know, every plating shop, every finishing shop is a little bit different, um, but we'd be happy to address those differences with you. All right, I'm checking the Q&A here. I'm not seeing any questions. Um, all right, one just popped up here. Do you offer, offer a mobile app? So yes, this is what I was saying earlier with, uh, because we have built this solution on top of Business Central, Microsoft has a mobile option uh, with Business Central. So there's an app on your phone and you can do full, not only just view, but also edit and update capability from your mobile app uh, within Business Central and PHC Plus. So our extension, our modifications will be included to where you can still access those from from your phone. Great question. Uh, great question there about uh, what's available with the mobile app. Any other questions, please don't hesitate to drop those into our Q&A. We will be sure to try and get you an update. And again, if it's not pertinent to what is available here within the system, we'll certainly follow up with you uh, at a later date. Let's see, I have another question that's coming here. Do you offer customization for uh, customizations? For example, importing orders for customers. Yes, so we can do a lot within, within the system. You can do customizations around um, how we bring things in. All of those reports and travelers and invoices, those are all just layouts of, of images of, uh, sorry, of reports that we have. We can customize, change those within the system. And then as well, we have a really, really, good development team in-house that we work with. Um, so that if the system or the process isn't working exactly how you thought it would be, we can actually jump in there, make some code changes, make some up underlying updates and get those set up for you. All right. Um, another question about a sandbox environment. Yes, so the system does have the ability to have sandbox environments, production environments. I believe uh, you can have up to three or five sandbox environments, which we certainly encourage. And that's part of what we do when we go live with the system. So when we're going live uh, with your company, we will actually create a sandbox environment for you, which we would encourage your employees to get into, poke around, test out the system and really explore what it can do uh, there within the system. All right, great question so far and certainly appreciate those questions uh, from you guys. Um, if there are no other questions coming in, you know, I will wrap the uh, wrap the presentation there. Um, again, thank you guys for your time. If you would like a copy of the presentation or recording of the video, please just shoot me a quick email or give me a call. We'll be happy to have those discussions with you. Look forward to talking with you separately after this to understand, you know, a little bit more about what you're chop what your warehouse is doing and um, and how our PHC plus uh, solution combined with with business central can help you guys so thanks again uh, with that we'll go ahead and end the presentation here and we certainly will hope you guys have a great rest of your day thanks for your time